I write as the birds sing, because I must, and usually from the same source of inspiration. Jean Stratton Porter. What's important to me about this property is Jean's legacy. We can see with our own eyes and with our own hands and with the stories that we tell about her time here, how important this space is, not only to Indiana's cultural history, but a natural history. To one Hoosier writer, this land in northeastern Indiana was, quote, touched by the Almighty, a place to discover the power of God's own creations. This is Wildflower Woods, home to Hoosier novelist and naturalist Jean Stratton Porter. Near the turn of the 20th century, this location in tiny Rome City, Indiana, was Stratton Porter's 120-acre temple to nature. Here, every intoxicating delight of early spring is in the air. The breeze that gently fans a cheek is laden with subtle perfume and the crisp, fresh odor of unfolding leaves. You can come here during the week and it's just, it's, it's quiet, it's nature. You hear the birds sing, you can hear the, the trees sway in the, in the wind, and you can hear why she loved it. When Jean Stratton Porter built this home just after the turn of the century, she was already an independent woman who had amassed her own wealth through the publication of articles, magazine features, novels, and published nature studies. Works like Laddie, The Harvester, and The Girl of the Limberlost were not only bestsellers, they also reflected and magnified an unending reverence for her natural surroundings. This was a place she could go to kind of refresh and get away from the hustle and bustle of her life. At the time she had, when she purchased the land, she had six of her novels and three of her nature studies done. So she was very popular and she couldn't really find a quiet place to retreat and be one with nature. If you're willing to work, you can write your name anywhere you choose. These are the people who write books, make exquisite music, carve statues, paint pictures, and work for others. Jean purchased the land here in October of 1912 and began construction shortly thereafter. By February of 1914, the home was completed and it was all Jean's vision. She wanted a place where she could come and have what she called a summer workshop, a place where she could come and retreat into nature. When Stratton Porter purchased this land on Sylvan Lake, she hired a tree surgeon and a landscaping crew to help rescue various natural plants and wild critters from the Hoosier countryside. To this day, many of the native species of flora and fauna found around these marshlands were rescued due to Stratton Porter's drive to save the native land that was so sacred to her. And she wanted to bring them here because she was creating this oasis, a space where she could protect them. Because she had 120 acres, she could plant to her heart's content. Jean also lit out into the woods with a full-sized box camera to capture rare images of native flowers, moths, birds, and butterflies. Stratton Porter's publications, both as a novelist and scientific journalist, have been published in more than 20 languages and are still in print today. She is the only Hoosier to have two state historic sites dedicated to her. She later moved to Hollywood and formed one of the only female-run studios, turning her written works into films. Nature can be trusted to work her own miracle in the heart of any man. Nature always levies her tribute. Jean was a woman that didn't really care what the norms were at the time. She didn't care that women weren't supposed to be out stomping around in the swamp. She was one who loved nature. She was one who wanted to share it with the world. And she didn't care that it was not normal. She didn't care that it's not what a woman should do. And to be able to tell her story and preserve her legacy of conservation and, and doing what you are passionate about and not letting the world stop you just because it's not normal. It doesn't matter what life throws at you, you can still do what you want to do. 
and find the space that fits you best. And Jean did that when she found the space here in Room City. She was able to find a space that brought her back to home, brought her back to her center, and to surround herself with nature and be able to continue to write and tell stories about the world around her. Mm -hmm.